All right, when I last left off on the axle, I just welded the perches on. That was a few days ago. Um, I made note that the next thing I was going to do is try to work on getting some control arms. I said hubs, but it's essentially knuckles and steering arms on the axle. Uh, I'll need those for making sure steering linkage and steering box clearances are there. I've got uh, I've got the knuckles here. I cleaned them up months and months ago and gave them a coat of paint. I have my upper knuckle cap slash steering arms. They've already been cleaned, self-etching primered, and I use a semi-gloss black. I kind of like the finish of this. Um, so I've got these parts already prepared. Got my lower caps cleaned up, ready to go. They've already been checked for uh, any burrs, no high spots, nothing sticking up on them. Um, I've taken at least one of these already and taken the flat file, cleaned up the edges of this mating surface. That way, um, caps and, and stuff will go right on them with no interferences. So, they're pretty ready. And of course, I put that on there, get stuck. <clears throat> also, sitting here, I have this tray just out of frame. I have a ton of these uh, Toyota style shims. Got my trunnion bearings knuckle bearings I've heard them called as well. I've got some of the trail gear super studs. Um, they have a hex on the top so whenever you insert them into the top of the knuckles um, you don't have to double nut them. You can just put a hex on this. I think it's a 9 or 10 something like that. Um, so you can just put them right in and tighten them right down to it. No big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over getting one of these knuckle assemblies on my axle. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do is pop these uh, bearings out. These are the upper and lower trunnion bearings. Um, they are identical, same part number. Um, part number 30303-A. Um, go ahead and take the race. See they right in there. I'm going to press the race into the knuckle housing. It's best to use uh, some sort of piece of wood, kind of cushion the blow. If you have a brass hammer or brass punches, those work even better. Um, you're very unlikely to hurt this, but <clears throat> go ahead and get it in there. You can use a thin feeler gauge to confirm that it's all the way seated. And it is. You can't slip the feeler gauge in. And this is a pretty thin one. <clears throat> Four thousandths. That's pretty thin. That it, it won't go in there. So here, the sound changes when it has reached the bottom. And for now, I'm leaving out the inner axle seal. My intention is going to be just to get the knuckle on with these bearings greased for the sake of getting my shim shim quantity correct. That way I can just have this knuckle on the axle, steering arm on there, I can start looking at steering parts. I know that I have to weld some steering stops to this, shock mounts to the top, and possible, hopefully, sway bar brackets to hold the sway bar on here. I don't want to apply a bunch of heat here and still have that seal in here. So I'm just going to skip it all together for now. Alright, next I'm going to go ahead and uh, grease these bearings up real quick. Um, I could hand pack them. It really doesn't take very long, but uh, I got my handy dandy little uh, taper bearing greaser. I think it's pretty slick. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Basically, you just take uh, take this bearing tool. It's got a hole in here that's hollow. So you hook the grease gun up here to the zerk fitting, and it's going to pump it out through the bottom. It'll fill up this void in here, and then push over into the valleys, nooks, and crannies of this bearing. 
you just put the bearing on there. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta worry about it centered too bad. It kind of self centers on here. Just kind of snug it on there. Take the grease gun. I have this grease gun. I never wants to let go of the tip. Unthread the taper again. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it will have pushed the grease out of the bottom. Plus, the center's got quite a bit in it. And you, you can take any excess off with your finger and wipe this onto the rest of the rollers. I'll be double checking these bearings before final assembly, making sure I'm really pleased with the amount. But I want just enough grease in here right now that I can uh, assemble this and test it properly. You know, proper simulation of having grease. I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and grease all four of these while I'm at it. First thing we're going to do is take our knuckle studs and put them into the knuckle. There we go. Front of the axle, back of the axle, front of the truck's that way. Caliper brackets go to the back. This knuckle is leaned in and inversely. The knuckles leaned in. So we're going to go ahead and take one of our large shims, put it in, take your bearing cap and slide it over. And you'll see it start poking up through there. And that, this is all a pressed seal. You don't need any seals or anything in there. That uh, collar that's passing through, this collar around in here passing through will seal to this. It doesn't get any leaks that way. And you take one of your bearings and place it up in there. And I'm going to set that in there to kind of hold the bearing in place temporarily. Take your next bearing, set it down in the top. I need a screwdriver and I got one. Alright, start sliding the uh, lower bearing cap up from the bottom. You take a uh, nut and a washer, start threading it on on the bottom. not going to be fully seated. It's just temporary to get it in there. And then this being the passenger side, there's two different um, steering arms. One is for the drag link, which is this one. I always forget the name of those, drag link or tie rods. And tie rods are the end piece. But essentially, driver steering box comes over and connects to the front one and then the passenger side this one and the driver side are linked by a rod so these two are connected together with two tie rods these two ends this is connected to the other end of the steering box long story short this is the passenger side and this will face towards the front and take another one of our 
shim spacers. Put it on there. You may have to finagle to get this thing squared in like that. It should start dropping in. These use the Toyota cone washers. And just take four. Drop them on. Lock washers. Followed by the nuts. All right, now I'm going to get out the torque wrench. All right, get yourself a reputable torque wrench. This is just a uh, cobalt one, and these need to be torqued to 80 foot pounds. 75, I've heard 85, I'm going to a 80. Alright, all of them are torqued to 80. Took the wind out of me because holy shit, I can't hold still. Alright, now next, you're going to want to get you one of these. It is a fish scale, also seen it as a luggage scale. Determines how much pull. Um, I learned online, especially from watching some videos by Low Range Off Road. They got some great videos on rebuild one of these axles. Uh, stock truck with this. If you hook this scale to the arm and you're pulling on it on a stock truck, you want it to be able to move and have eight pounds of force as you pull it. On a truck with oversized tires, that's like 35s and larger, we're looking for 15 pounds. That's what I'm going to be shooting for. So I'm just going to put it on one side and pull and read what it says. You guys probably won't be able to see that very well. I'm just going to take my word for it, but with it moving, it's about 6 pounds of force. That's how much preload is on these bearings. And that was six pounds of force. I'm looking for closer to like 15. And that tells me, the grease is all moved around good. That tells me that these shims are too thick. I need to reduce the amount of thickness in between the steering arm and the knuckle, the bearing cap and the knuckle. That will bring these two parts closer together and put more pressure on those bearings and then increase the stiffness of this. So, got it all torque spec, it's not right, that sucks. Got to take all eight of these bolts off, take these two caps off, which can be a little bit difficult sometimes. But I'm going to take these all out, and I'm going to take those shims out and put in a thinner shim. We'll probably step down to the 32,000. See the upper arm just came right off, nice and clean. Just wipe the grease off for cleanliness. 40,000th shim. Now this sometimes can be tricky, the lower bearing cap can get on there pretty tight. In this situation where it's uh, the top is off, you can take a, a long uh, cold punch and you can punch the center of it from the top. Forty thousand shim out. If these weren't enough on this side, they're not likely to be enough on the next side. I'm going to go ahead and put a thirty-two thousandth of an inch spacer on the bottom. And then take a nut and a washer and put it on and I'm gonna repeat the process. Oh yeah, it's definitely stiffer to move now. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the scale back up. I'm getting about 11 pounds pressure. I'm gonna step it down one more time. I'm 
guess we're gonna have to go to 20 thousandths. I'm tempted to go to 26 thousandths. I'll probably stack a 20 and a 6 thousandths on it and see how close we get. Okay, so got 26 thousandths top and bottom and I'm pulling on it. I had to work it up a little bit. Seems to take about 17 pounds of pressure to start moving and then it runs for about 16 pounds about across the stroke. So I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. So everything you just saw is how you assemble the knuckle on a Toyota pickup solid axle. Really not difficult. It's just tops and bottoms, shims, bearings until it's to the correct amount of pull force. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to show you doing the other side. I'm just going to go ahead and knock it out. All right. Finished up passenger side and driver's side. Uh, this one's about 17 to get started, about 16 moving. Close enough. I mean, I don't have enough shims to fine tune it that tight. I'd have to be, I'd have to be getting into a heck of a lot smaller numbers. You know, two thousandths, one thousandths, and playing with it, but things can be fine. Um, they do work in tandem. So, but now that's on there. Before I actually put this under the truck, <clears throat> I'll probably throw this uh, crossover steering, whatever you want to call it, the tie rod for them. Um, I'll probably throw the tie rod on there while it's on the bench and just put a straight edge against these faces for the spindle faces, and uh, use those just to kind of pre-set this thing up for you know square i'm not going to worry about toe in toe out while it's not under the truck yet i'll just go ahead and get it close that way the steering rod will be um pretty much ready to go all right i've dug out the tie rod <clears throat> tie rod crossover bar it goes in between the two ends uh, i took two squares uh got some help from my wife took two squares butted them up flush to the spindle face, measure between them, got them close enough to equal. Like I said, just kind of getting them straight-ish. Got my box here, also just stuff from Trail Gear. These are going to be uh, FJ80 tie rods. Pretty common upgrade, uh, especially when you're doing high steer stuff. Guys are looking for beefier, beefier stuff in the FJ80 Land Cruiser. Um, <clears throat> it's got beefier tie rods, so. Got a left and a right. This thing is going to, is uh, tapped left and right. Let me throw these in there. When you're uh, threading these into the tie rod, you kind of want them to be engaged the same amount of depth. You wouldn't want one that's in, you know, three quarters of its throw and the other one only in a quarter. You kind of want them to be equal. All right, now that I got them in there, uh, the measurement I had was 49 and 7 eighths end to end, so. I'll just be measuring from one end down there to the center up here, try to get to about 49 and 7 eighths. As usual, phone died in the middle of trying to record that last bit, but regardless, got both tie rods on the tie rod, got it set up close to square. So, this has the ability. Going in there, going in there and you've got steering connection so i think that's where i'm going to leave off for this video <clears throat>